All right, hope you enjoyed uh, lunch and uh, conversation with lunch and uh, networking. Um, that's certainly always um, usually one of the highlights of these events. And we had a, a bit of a right uh, design engineering focus uh, before lunch, and now after lunch we will hear from um, four professionals that work for contractors, uh, two again from Norway and two from uh, Switzerland. So we uh, will start with Henrik, and uh, excited to hear how you leverage VDC. Okay, yeah, it's on there. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. I guess it's a mix of uh, being both uh, terrified and excited at the same time, so I'm not sure how to feel about it, but uh, today I'm going to speak about uh, how we use the VDC as a framework and methodology in uh, small construction projects as a small and medium-sized contractor. So, let's see if that works, yes. I will start off with a brief introduction into who I am and the company I work for before diving into why we want to use VDC in Galebig and how we use it in both the design phase and the construction phase before I will uh, sum up with some results and uh, recommendations on how you can getting started with the VDC. So, the first slide, I learned that you should show who you are other than working as a lean and quality manager at Gale Big. I, as you can see of the pictures, like to do pretty much everything that has to do with outdoor activities. And uh, I'm also in former jobs. I have a, I'm a carpenter, I'm a helicopter pilot, logistics engineer, and uh, not least, I got the VDC certification this year. So that's short who I am. Over to the company I work for. I work for a company called uh, Gealbig, and uh, we are a typical Norwegian mid-sized main contractor with the in-house professions of concrete works and uh, carpentry. And we are dedicated to our clients people and the sustainability and uh, for the last year we had a turnover at about 31 million US dollars and we are about 70 employees and I thought we was a pretty small organization but I heard Peter speaking on Monday I guess that in Switzerland it is the average number of employees was eight I guess wasn't that right Peter so I guess in Switzerland we are a bit big company, maybe. <laughs> uh, we are located in the middle of Norway in a small place called Overhalla, where it's about uh, 3,000 uh, citizens, so it's a pretty small town. <laughs> and if you want to know more about us, you can go into the homepage. Typical projects that we do are in for the aquaculture with the fish farms and for the governmental, we build the public schools and swimming pools and yeah, those types of projects. So why would a small contractor like us want to use the WDC? First of all, for us, it is about making people work together more effectively because we can have all the systems and all the metrics that we want, but our experience is when we get to collaborate together, we create, as I say in the next point, good projects. And a good project for us is when we deliver what the customer or the client wants from us at the right quality and the time, and when we succeed together as one interdisciplinary team, not only GL Big has success but all the subcontractors also have success so if we manage to get people work more efficiently together we create good projects and the result is that we get excellent quality and economy in our projects so over to how we use it in the design phases 
first of all, we focus on the early involvement of all the disciplines involved in the specific project, where we lay a plan from finished design and all the way to the start, where we try to get all the disciplines to say what they're going to deliver, at what time, and what they need from the other disciplines to be finished in time. And to follow up on this plan, we have uh, weekly plan checks, and here we try to focus on the activities that lies ahead of us, because if we are looking into it and we are in week 23 and the architect is supposed to be finished today, it's too late to find out today that he is late in his delivery. So we have to focus on the next three weeks ahead. And then we used to follow up with the use of the six conditions for sound design activities. So we can ask if it is the architects, if, and he is going to deliver the floor plan for the next two weeks. Does he have the methods and tools? Does he have the capacity and the competence? Are there some collaboration needed? Does he have missed some decisions? Are the expectations and requirements clear? And are the previous activity finished? We also work to was applying the VDC framework in each and every project because we think it's a good uh, way to see and get it clear what the project wants to achieve by focusing on both the client objectives but also the project objectives and how we want this to succeed to be a good project. And maybe for me, I guess, the hardest part is to focus on the metrics that gives the real value. And by that I mean when we try to define what's the leading metrics rather than lagging, because as I said with the activities, it's too late to know when we are finished with the design phase how it went. We want to have the results during the design phase. But that's something that I find a bit tricky to define the best metrics. over to how we use VDC in our construction phases. So the first one here, when speaking about VDC, it's not a common language in the Overhalla at least. So uh, we try to have fun doing this. So we train together with our subcontractors, not only in Gjellbygg, but we gather all, and we have courses together trying to develop a common understanding on what we want to achieve by using VDC. And as I said, in the design phase here as well, we try to focus on the early involvement to get all the uh, disciplines gathered and develop one tact plan for the whole project. And here we focus on which areas of the project are repetitive, because then we can put into a tact, but the areas not being repetitive, we can make more or less a flow plan. It will more be a tact plan then. And to follow up on the plan, we have a daily, weekly, and monthly huddles. We have internally huddles where only people in GLBIG speak about what we're going to do this day and ahead. And we also gathered all the other subcontractors at the building sites where we focus on the following up on the seven conditions for sound construction activities. So here we can ask, for instance, the plumber if he has the design ready, or do we have the right tools, the materials he need? Are the workers ready to start? And uh, does he have the workspace he need? The previous activity, if it's the plumber, are the carpenter ready? And if there are some health and safety issues that we need to address before starting at the site. And to let them make good decisions on the construction sites, we place out this BIM kiosk where all the different subcontractors can go in and look at the design. There it is a collected model with all the different disciplines involved. So here are some of the results that we have managed to achieve by using VDC in this way in Gelbig. So for the project I did in my certification, we looked at the design issue solving process 
And by that I mean when it discovered that there is some design issue in the process here. We used on average 93 work days to solve it because we don't have any decisions and the electrician and the architects, they won't speak together. So they send emails maybe to me and ask if I can get it ready. And then you see we can use, yeah, on average 93 work days. But by involving the, the decision maker and having this collected plan, we managed to get it down to an average of 10 days. And we also measured on the PPU of the plan. And as you can see, we managed to meet more than the target in three of our six periods. And uh, maybe my favorite, I put the bar a bit high with the five out of five as a target on the score of plus delta. So that's an experience that I will take with me on the future projects. But uh, I like this one very good because you get the immediate response from everyone involved, what they want to improve with future sessions and what was good that we can continue to, to do in the future sessions. And also all the other subcontractors and designers involved think that this was a really good thing to just end the meetings with, okay, I'm allowed to say that this was really good and this was, yeah, not so good. And maybe the most important results for us is the one up to the left there, where we have our customer satisfaction index. I'm not going to go through all these points, but here we send out the survey to all our clients every time we're finished with a project, and we ask them how they feel that this delivery was, and it can be how they find our workers, our project managers, and yeah, if they will recommend GL Big for a future client. So the number 9.6 out of 10 is uh, if they will recommend us to another client. And this is for the, yeah, since we started scoring, I guess it's for 20 projects and we are on 9.6 out of 10. So I guess we have to do something right. And we also ask our subcontractors how they feel about working with us and as a result of working with VDC, uh, the painter we use has said that uh, because of the predict predictability when working with us, he calculate with lower risk, giving us a lower price, meaning that we both can earn more money. And also one of the architects we work with says that when working with us, he feels that there is efficiency, transparency, and preparedness from all participants. And I guess that's something that we want to achieve by using VDC. So I would like to come with some recommendations on how to get you can get starting. So the first one is the management buy-in is an advantage. And by that, I mean that each and every one of us can do something and it's easier to try it out than I sit, wait for maybe Catherine is my boss and says, you should do it like this. I can choose to do it like this and show it to her that this works. So the next one is to think big, start small and scale fast. And I think Gunnar gave a good example today with the eyes, which is a good example of, yeah, you think big, but you use the start small with the ice sessions, and then you can scale it into a success for the whole company. So create success and get proof of concept and then scale it into an organizational strategy. And have fun and train together to create the right competence that you want to have in the project. And don't be afraid to fail. It either works or we learn something. I'm not uh, very good at making uh, mistakes. I think it's uh, tough, but it's a good sentence to don't be afraid. And uh, expand, we are making a framework for the whole organization. You can say something about how you want to use it for the whole organization. Focus on the value this bring and what you want it to solve. It's not necessarily that everything is right for your organization, but pick things that you think will work for you guys. 
and uh, involve all the employees and the other contractors so you can focus on succeeding together as one team. So just to be short and sum up, in Gjellbygg we want to use VDC to make people work more efficiently together to create good projects and achieve excellent quality and economy. And we, we do that by using VDC in both the design phase and the construction phase, where we focus on the early involvement and following up with the conditions for sound activities. And as a result, we can see that we have must have done something right by the metrics we have, and we hope to develop this further as a company. And uh, the last one is for me to be curious, ask people here, there are a lot of experts here that can learn you things about VDC and how to start. And uh, think big, start small and scale fast. So I guess that was it for me. Thank you.